When you think about the way that art affects you, it's an easy thing to feel, but it's not always so easy to put it into words. When I first experienced it, I was just, I was hooked right away, you know? And it's one of those things that just bodies you, right? And you find yourself thinking, where has this been all my life? It's basically ineffable, you know, when you're in that place for the first time and it's so daunting. But then as you start to get a sense of where you are, you're just, I mean, you're literally communing with the gods in seconds and it's breathtaking. And before you know it, in the blink of an eye, you're confronting your own ego and the emotional and physical limitations of people, you know, people you recognize. And I think that's where the true beauty of the thing really is. It's not just in the profundity of the despair, but it's in those moments of humanity and truthfully of laughter. And when you reach the end, there's just... It's an incomparable feeling when you just want to start it all over again, right? You just want to ride the thing again. My name is Ham Squiggles, and I beat the video game Hades. <laughs>高野川と鴨川に挟まれた三角地帯に位置する下鴨神社、京都に由緒正しき神社は山ほどあれど中でも下鴨神社は平安以前から存在する屈指の大神社である。縁結びをはじめ様々なご神徳を得るべく、年間
Just a few hours after booting up Hades for the first time last October, I knew right away that I was playing an instant classic. The art direction was lush and grimy, the combat was buttery smooth, and the riffs were giving Paper Mario the Origami King a run for their money right out of the gate. And that game has some truly insane riffs. But as I've continued to play it and ruminate on its intricate configuration since that time, it's elegantly cemented itself in my mind as not just my favorite game of 2020, but an honest-to-gods all-timer. So why do I feel it deserves such a prestigious spot in my own personal media canon? Is it how the brilliant character writing and even better narrative structure make it one of the best workplace comedies ever made? Is it the in-game economy that is so precisely balanced that no singular item or currency is ever superfluous? Is it the fact that if you crunch the numbers using all of this insane math that I spent way too long figuring out for the six people who might care, there are 18,474,118,560 possible weapon slash boon combinations? Nope. Well, yes, those things are all accurate and very great, but here's the thetical response. Hades is, above all else, a game about acting in good faith made in good faith. Nobody was asking for a game like Hades specifically, yet it garnered universal acclaim because it is immediately apparent that there isn't an ounce of cynicism to be found within its ever-shifting walls. It's a game that was built to push creative boundaries, reshape genre expectations, and respect the intelligence and preferences of their audience, and all with ethical labor practices, I might add. It's one of those once-in-a-generation games that keeps your mind engaged at every turn without overloading you, that makes you take stock of the entire industry at once while still feeling like a perfect snapshot shot of how much amazing stuff can be accomplished, even despite how very far we have to go. Speaking as someone that's been known to feel the disquieted sizzle of gamer burnout more and more with each passing year, Supergiant Games made something that never fails to remind me why I fell in love with video games in the first place. So, you know, thanks for that. And that's it. Wow, I actually managed to thoughtfully explicate my feelings on Hades without hilariously self-destructing. Look at that. I guess it can't, oh, but I guess I'm still broke though. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have any money. Yeah, I'm still, so I guess I will die. It'll just be slowly over a longer period of time. So I guess that, yeah, there's, there is no escape. Cool. Cool.